Now, our last topic in biotechnology is dark biotechnology. If you go back to the introductory lecture that we had taken, there I had discussed that when we look at the negative aspects related to biotechnology, we are actually talking about dark biotechnology. Now, we have talked about concerns over cloning, concerns regarding stem cells, concerns regarding DNA fingerprints. So, all these are the parts which come under dark biotechnology. So, the dark side of biotechnology in its color code is denoted as dark biotechnology and involves the areas of bioterrorism, bio warfare, etc. So, that's why dark biotechnology is about the negative aspect of biological science and tools. So, what are these negative sides? Let's have a look at it. First, weapons of mass destruction. We had a discussion about this that once I know the genetic makeup of a population of an individual, I can launch an attack against a certain population. Because I know the genetic makeup, I know how these genes can be negatively impacted and what kind of chemicals or what kind of biological weapons can act against it. So, for example, let's say, just let's say, just if we imagine COVID-19 also to be something that has been made in the lab. There have been stories going around that people say that perhaps this is something that was created in the lab for something similar to lodge a biological warfare. And if it was true, whoever wanted to do it, they actually have succeeded. Because we have seen how the world has suffered because of COVID-19 virus. So this is nothing but if at all, if at all this is something that has been made in the lab, then this is nothing but a biological warfare. Because you have created a weapon of mass destruction. A virus that our body is not able to fight. Has not been equipped to fight. And this is what we are looking at. That this virus initially started to bring in a disaster in the world. And then there are variants. There is the Delta variant that came and everyone was panicking. And now we have seen with the Omicron variant. That with the Omicron variant, none of the vaccines are working against it. So just imagine that how... A biological warfare can be put upon the world with the help, if I can use this word, with the help of biotechnology. So, weapons of mass destruction can be created. So, this basically is what leads to bioterrorism. What is bioterrorism? Deliberate use of biological agent, microorganisms, pathogens and toxins by release or disseminating to cause harm in the form of illness or death to humans, crops, livestock, animals or natural environment. Alright. So, in this case, we will call it as bioterrorism. So, that's why I am saying that if at all, if these stories are true by any sense of imagination, then in that case, it is nothing but bioterrorism. Correct. So, after this, there is another problem that can happen that is regeneration of extinct pathogens. That now that we are so extensively, we are discussing and discovering about the genetic makeup of various pathogens, what stops us from artificially creating something like this? And we can regenerate extinct pathogens tomorrow. For example, let's say the vaccination against smallpox has been completely successful in the world. And today, smallpox is not an epidemic anymore. It used to be an epidemic, had become a pandemic. But... It had been contained through vaccination. But now, the upcoming generations are not vaccinated against smallpox. Because smallpox is not a disease anymore that exists. But let's say tomorrow, if somebody wants to bring back smallpox pathogen and they have the required knowledge to produce this particular virus, then nothing stops them from doing that. Then effects on biodiversity. Now, we know that biotechnology can have a negative impact on biodiversity. Just think of certain crops, alright? We know that there are certain crops which have a better yield or they act better or they are able to survive in even low nutrition conditions or low water conditions. They are able to resist droughts. Now, what happens is that we might always want to select these kind of seeds which are giving us better commerce which are giving us better yields, which are giving us better profits. We would always want these variants. So what happens to other variants? They will die a slow death because nobody wants them. If you go back to, for example, 2018 and 19, in 2018, there was a discussion about 
GM mustard. The government of India wanted to introduce the seeds of GM mustard for the farmers. Now GM mustard was seen to be a better variant, a variant that would give at least 25 to 30 percent better yields as compared to the normal variants of mustard. And that's why this is the aspect that the government was thinking about that they will be able to increase the yield of mustard and farmers probably will be able to gain better from these seeds. But at the same time, we do not know what could be the negative impacts on GM mustard. One of the statements that were made by Supreme Court at that point of time is that you are saying that, okay, in the US, GM mustard is all already being used. In Thailand, GM mustard is already being used. Tell us why the entire European Union has banned this particular variant of GM mustard. If it was so good, European Union should not have banned it. So there are multiple concerns. We don't know how the biodiversity will react over a long period of time. Today we know that the yields are increasing. But we don't know whether it has a long term effect on soil or long term effect on other organisms or other plants which are growing in the vicinity. Another problem could be, if you consider mustard, there are more than 66 variants of mustard in India today. More than 66 varieties. What happens to these 66 varieties? They will be lost. Even the best of the varieties, for example, if you consider the Varuna variety of mustard, even Varuna variety of mustard is not as good as GM mustard in terms of yield, I am speaking of. So what happens to all these other species? They become extinct. So the biodiversity is decreasing. If there are other animals or if there are other plants which are dependent on this particular variant, then even they will face a problem. Right? They will also become extinct. So over a period of time, what happens is that the genetic diversity starts to decrease. What happens if tomorrow, let's say this GM mustard gets diseased. It gets affected by a pathogen. And all the crops of GM mustard starts to drop. They starts to die. If they start to die, what happens then? All the other varieties are already extinct because you haven't used it for last 20 years. So now this is the only variety which is available with you. And if this variety gets diseased, there's nothing that can save this mustard from getting extinct. So that's why maintaining biological diversity or genetic diversity is very, very important. So that is one major problem that may happen with biodiversity if at all genetic diversity decreases. So at present few plants and animal species are focus of research leading to ignorance of other species. A focus on few species may lead to their growth and can have negative effect on remaining species. So this is what basically we are talking about. Then after that there is the concept of terminator G. What's the meaning of terminator genes? Terminator genes are specific genes which are added to the seeds so that the seeds become infertile in the next season. What happens? Today, let's say you are a farmer. You go to the market and you buy the seeds of, let's say, cauliflower. All right? You have gone to the market, you have bought the seeds of cauliflower. Or, okay, let me consider tomato, a simpler crop. You went to the market, you bought the seeds of tomato. You, uh, you have sown the tomato seeds and what happens is that you get a bumper crop. You get a very good crop. The tomatoes are healthy. They are very good. They have a good market price as well. So what do you do? You conserve the seeds. Because you want to use the same seeds because these tomatoes were healthy. You want to use the same seeds in the next sowing season as well. So you conserve these seeds. Next sowing season, you go back to your field, you sow the seeds of tomato, this time there is no crop. Why? Because the company from which you bought these seeds, they had inserted terminator genes inside the seeds of tomato. What are these terminator genes? Terminator genes, if added to a seed, will make the seed infertile going forward. That you will be able to sow the seeds and get the fruits or vegetables from them only once. After that, they will become infertile altogether. So now what happens? In the next sowing season, you see that these seeds are not working. You already know that you actually had a good profit from these seeds. So you want to go back to the same company 
to buy the same seeds. This time when you go, the prices have increased. And this is how the market or the companies will try to monopolize the market. By inserting these terminator genes, they will create a demand first and then they will increase the prices once the demand has increased. So this is what happens and this is how terminator genes can be used. And that's why the use of terminator genes also come under the purview of dark biotechnology. So a terminator gene in genetically modified crop plant stops the plant from releasing fertile seeds. Hence, the farmer is again required to purchase the seeds in the next cropping season. The practice of incorporating terminator gene trade in some seed varieties is adopted by multinational companies to enhance the sale of seeds. Then after this, there is another problem that these terminator genes may also cross-pollinate with other crops or other weeds in the crop field. Then what happens is that this starts to move forward. And, and with cross-pollination, we don't know what kind of combination will be produced. And this may lead to production of super weeds. So this terminator crop may cross-pollinate with local varieties and may affect the continuity of agriculture. So this may happen at the same time they may produce super weeds. Super weeds are the kinds of weeds which become very difficult to kill because of some kind of genetic variation or the other. So with the terminator genes or the terminator crop plants also cross pollinating with another crop or another weed we do not know what kind of outcome will come from here. And because most of the times these are illegally being used because none of the governments have allowed the use of terminator genes we don't know what the negative impact of using terminator genes could be. So that's why that's another problem that we might face with the use of terminator genes or in any genetic modification for that matter. Because what may also happen with genetic modification is that we know that for this crop it is good. This is something that was raised with GM mustard also. That we know that for mustard this is good. This genetic variation or genetic modification is good for mustard and good for yield of mustard. But what happens when these genes of GM mustard mix with the other genes or genes of let's say other weeds which are growing in the same field. Now these are able to grow better. These are able to survive even in high pesticide areas. Now what happens is that all these weeds also develop a characteristic that they will also be not killed by the pesticides. Correct? So these kind of problems may happen. So any genetic modification or any genetically modified crop with them we have to consider all these aspects as well so that they should only give us an advantage, they should only give us benefits, only give us profits and there should be no negative impact of any such crop. Alright? So this is something that we have to always keep in mind. Then there are some other problems also, for example, the ones that we have discussed, socio-economic issues. We discussed how cloning can impact the society, impact the institution of marriage or parenthood and all these things. It can decrease the value of human life. So all these problems do exist. Then cultural issues also we had discussed about that how when you do the research on embryos, when you kill the embryos, for many cultures, it is not acceptable. So that's why this is also an issue that we have. Then there are environmental issues. We have discussed about the problems with biodiversity, the problem of super weeds. We have discussed about the environmental issues that can be caused because of certain kind of crops that we grow. So there are many such aspects of environmental issues as well. And then finally, the legal issues. Legal issues with regards to certain procedures. For example, when and when not to carry gene therapy, when to use and under what circumstances can we use the process of three parents baby, can we or can we not make the use of human cloning. So all these things are a part of legal issues as well. So there are these other issues also that are there with biotechnology. So that's why they also have to be seen under dark biotechnology. Right? So with this we come to the end of this chapter on biotechnology. Remember that this is a very, very important chapter both for your prelims as well as your mains examinations. And also, if you come across any term in the newspapers in the coming days, please make sure that you 
make it a part of the notes wherever we have studied or whatever notes you might have made or wherever you have compiled everything related to biotechnology because many a times a question can be directly based on current affairs or maybe an indirect application of everything that we have learned here especially in your prelims examination you have to be ready for that all right so with this we come to the end of this chapter on biotechnology thank you